It has been my observation through the years that many Christians are thinking Christians, while others are perhaps more what we would describe as feeling Christians. And so we need each other. But my question is which one are you? If you are like me and tend to be more in the thinking realm than in the feeling realm, or tend to preferring the thinking over the feeling, then Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 is a challenging verse, but it's also a very good verse because if you're on the feeling side, you probably should be working on your thinking and giving attention to that. Make sure you're not neglecting the rational aspect of our lives, the, the thinking world. And if you're in the thinking world and you may be suspicious of the feeling side of things, then you should probably be challenged to give some attention to your emotions and, and recognize that one is not better than the other. But we are holistic beings. That's the way God has created us. He has created us with body, mind, emotions, soul, a will, a spirit. And we need to be balanced and not be too far, if you want to call it a spectrum here of feeling and thinking. Don't need to be too far on one or the other, but instead... Embrace the fact that God has created us as thinking and feeling beings. Zephaniah 3, 17 is a great challenge for those of us who are thinkers. Listen to these beautiful, wonderful words. The Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you. With his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. This is an amazing image to think that the God of the universe, the one who created everything, the eternal one, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the incomprehensible maker of all things rejoices over us with singing? A singing God? Is it possible that our God sings over us? That's exactly what the Bible says. Not only does he sing over us, he rejoices over us with gladness. He quiets us with his love. But the especially stunning thing to me, who is one who is more on the thinking side, is that he rejoices over me, his child, because I've been born again, because I've been born of the Spirit, because I've repented of my sin and placed my faith in Jesus Christ to save me. I am a child of his, and he rejoices over me with singing. Maybe there's some dads out there who you used to sing to your newborn baby and help it go asleep. I didn't do much of that. It tends to be more what moms maybe do is sing over their young ones, help them go to sleep at night, to quiet them with love, to be at peace and at rest, not be striving because our Heavenly Father is quieting us with His love. Think about our anxieties, the pressures of life, and our awesome, good shepherd, our awesome God, quiets us with his love, and he rejoices over us with singing. Wow. It's hard to fathom. It's hard to imagine. And it should strike an emotional chord with us. Let that sink in, dear believer. Of all the verses in the Old Testament, I think this might be one of the most challenging to me personally. Because I have a hard time sometimes believing that God is rejoicing over me with singing. And yet, He is. Not because of anything I've done, but simply because Christ has enabled me to be one of His children. And if you're one of His children, He rejoices over you with singing. Reflect on that 
meditate on that, think about that, and then rejoice in the fact that God is rejoicing over you. He cares about you, he loves you, and he rejoices over you with singing. It's stunning. It's, it's something that perhaps needs some more attention, especially, again, for those of us who are on the thinking side of things. Maybe some of you on the, on the feeling side are like, yeah, I get it. Wonderful. Praise God for that. Pray for us who have a harder time having that image in our mind of who God is. God is awesome. We have a lifetime to get to know Him and grow in Him. But don't lose sight of this truth. He rejoices over us singing.